you know, Bin of Treasures are fun. Other cool street lights. This is a uh, round one. Looks looks almost like a ship lamp. Uh, it looks pretty good. I can't see any make on it, but I will analyze it. Just the wire's been cut off. Not sure if it works, but I like it. It's very cool, so I'm going to open it up and document the device and see if I can get it to work. This lamp opens actually quite easy. First Imbus key I've found, or Allen key, you guys you call it here. Fit it straight away, so we're going to take the lid off and have a look what it reveals inside. I doubted that the LEDs are faulty, and then we can modify the LEDs to. Uh, Suit the purpose. Oh, that comes off easy, this doesn't even go on, that's good. And the hood off. Nice membrane on here. That's pretty good. And now we've got here. Get the camera up a bit better. Stand by. So the LEDs are underneath the top of diffuser or Fresnel lens. So we'll see when we open this device up. Uh, now we can see what screws are it. It looks like uh, Phillips or something like that. So I'll try that out. Oh, they come out easy. That's good. Take these two screws out. Good thing is when you take things apart, put marks on it. Which I'll do. I'll put a little mark here. It saves you dramatizing when things have to go back together and they don't line up for whatever reason. But many factors like to make things difficult sometimes. Well, the surprise is amazing. You look at this, you think big LEDs, and you take this diffuser off, and they're tiny little LEDs. Absolutely minuscule. No worries. And the other side of this device is yes, a pure fresh Nell lens device, I think. Yeah. It's really cool. Look at this in front of the roadster. Oh, that looks really nice. I love these lenses. You can see some more of them, some more on the skip. And all these chips are just a couple of screws there, so I'm gonna take that apart. Okay, screws removed. And the LED plate. Just aluminium, so I go straight onto the heatsink. It looks like the wire is going in there, so the, all the electronics are supposed to be in this little arm here. It probably popped, we'll, we'll see, we'll take it apart a bit further and uh, analyze it. Well, this thing appears to be a WE-EF. Some data on there, and then uh, MP1777474A4. And the LEDs, the tiny LEDs, they've got all the own driver transistors on them as well. Oh yeah, here's another nameplate, let's have a look what that says. Some code numbers. Yeah, connector blocks. Very cool. Well, this is interesting. I'll just take this uh, end piece off and uh, weave. Uh, that wire goes straight in there. Um, I doubt it's 240 volts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put DC or Ripple DC 100 hertz via Variac and see if we get the thing to work. It's the safest way of testing these. Interesting. I found a label inside. Class 1, color 4000 Kelvin. IP66, 500 milliamps, 0.3 ampere, it doesn't say anything about uh, voltage. 2014, Mark Herring Lighting, Auckland, Christchurch. Hmm. Um, yeah. The wire going in looks like a normal uh, 240 volt one, but it needs to be carefully assessed. Yeah, this lamp relies on external source. I've just identified the wires. It was an earth wire in there and two black wires. I put red on tape on here. It goes to the positive there. I wink those wires through and uh, I wink the other ones through and it's a negative. And then the white one or the grey one is a jumper between those two. So 
You should be able to get this on the variac and then uh, run Whipple DC. Okay, I'm finally going to test this LED light, which I haven't tested. I don't know the voltage of the device. So what I've done for my archaic setup here, I've tapped a variac in here. And the variac output goes to this plug here. It comes out on this end here to a little fused uh, terminal here. Into the green lead is the AC bridge rectifier DC into the lamp. And I'm going to ramp it up slowly and then we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully it uh, works or it doesn't. I'm going to energize the device shortly and see what happens. Fifteen volts so going slowly. There we go, the LEDs work. Ha! <laughs> Fantastic! I measure my current, I keep it all. These LEDs are probably only low current ones. So this lamp works really well. 45 volts, look at the output already. Uh, that's about 100 milliamps. So this light, which I just found, is nothing wrong with it. There's one LED out. Not too worried about that. The cool Westfall Society we have here. I'll put the diffuser in. 46 volts the device works. It doors uh, 27 watts minus, say 20 watts. That is very nice. Let it stabilize for a few minutes. I'm going to insert the diffuser, see how it's going to work. Uh, where was that center mark? What I put? Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, that's very nice. Hundred fifty milliamp here. No, keep it a bit lower. I keep it lower. So keep it at that reading. I'm just going to turn the other lights off and see what the number is. Deanajas, other lights. Could overdrive it. I don't believe in overdriving things. This is actually a very nice light. So again with everything, don't overdrive things. I, I probably could put more cards through it. Oh, it sits somewhere on the nameplate. I need to analyze it. But uh, yeah, this is happy. I'll let it cook for a few minutes. That meter is hardly recording it. 29 minus 8, so that's 20 watts, 21 watts. So that's really good. Uh, look at this old meter here that's slowly turning as well. Cool, happy. We're reading the nameplate 300 milliampere, so that's the load. I don't like that, so 150 milliampere is enough. So I've got one dead pixel here, I can live without that. 38 volts is about when they start coming on, and uh, 40 volts, 41 volts current is hardly going up, and there's a curve when they start going up here. 44 volts. Intensity goes up and the current is uh, starting to jump up, so it's really critical. There's in a couple of volts, there's a massive increase in brightness and uh, current, of course. You know, 120 milliampere. So testing these, yeah, 37 volts here. Just a simple bridge rectifier will do, and this is just an old uh, 5 amp variac and does the job. That converts, uh, give me a full voltage from my zero to about 270 volts AC. Over well, the ship lamp, I cobbled a simple power supply together 680 nano, which actually fire 100 ohm series resistor, and uh, it's driving the ship lamp and it works really well. I just turn it on. That's only running at 40 milliampere, and um, as you see here, it's only 1680, so I'll Probably put another in parallel. What is this bug all? It's low power factor. Oh, yeah, I need to put a shutter speed difference, stand by. 
Okay, shutter speed adjusted to 100 Hz and it's fine, so it doesn't affect. So there was one pixel had broken. So yeah, this runs really good. I'm going to put another capacitor in parallel, so make it uh, 2680, so that's about 1360 micro, and then get the current up a little bit. You can hardly see the ammeter move here too if you look at this. Turn this off. And wash this back all. So yeah, three days. Okay, parallel capacitors made. Lamp is going a bit brighter, a brighter, brighter. 80 milliampere. Yeah. And the analog meter is about in step with the digital meter, 80 milliampere. So that's good. So there's no need to have these LEDs on full power. So uh, yeah, so you can uh, rather run them under lower current. So current limit. Uh, these capacitors need a 680k quarter watt resistor for bleeding when the device is de-energized. And I could look at the meters here, so they all seem to be turning over very slow. And there we go, de-energize device.